What it do, sober soldier salute. This is Stick from Dead Press with my partner, M1. And you are in tune to Got Kush TV. Was there was there was empires in Africa called Kush Timbuktu where every race came to get booked Put my success to you even if you wish me the opposite Sooner or later we'll all see who the prophet is I told me now I jelly but you're great me beyond and you call God Kush TV. My name is Naa Jelly Bojokwe and right now you're watching God Kush TV. Thank you. Why them shot a shot a side? Was a tout bon la fin menace, we fond et dem chante chante sa. Mon compère, we a ou lo ou lo ou lo, mon compère, we fond et dem chante chante sa. Mon compère, we a ou lo ou lo ou lo, mon compère, we mon jo ou lo. Kumanu 
The God who created the earth, who created the sun that gives us light, the God who holds up the ocean, who makes the thunder roar, our God who has ears to hear, you who are hidden in the clouds, who can watch us from where you are, you see all that the whites have done to make us suffer. The white man's God asked him to commit crimes, but the God within us wants to do good. Our God, who is so good, so just, he orders us to revenge our wrongs. It's he who will direct our arms and bring us to victory. It's he who will assist us. Throw away the image of the white man's God, who is so pitiless and listen to the voice of liberty that speaks in all our hearts. Aibobo, aibobo, bon komba. Aibobo, bon komba. Aibobo. Tenda mwari, be thankful unto the mother, father, creative life force of the universe, Kudzai Mozimo Mokuro. We give praises unto our great ancestors, Abibi Tumi, Abibi Fahodi, African power and African liberation for all African people. Wadea, 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 kings and queens. It is Zivanai Live, your weekly, weekly open house. Uh, here on Got Kush TV, I am your humble host, Shakara. Um, and we're not going to keep it too long, brothers and sisters, because we have a very, very important show for you today with a very 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 important guest um and i am uh honored and humbled to be able to host her and so we're going to get into the thing very very quickly all i ask you, all I ask you is as usual like the video as you come through please like up the video as you come through and share the link far and wide this is our first in what we are referring to as we stand with haiti we're going to have a number of different guests breaking down the current and historical situation in the great nation of haiti and so uh do stay tuned for more conversations because the situation is fast developing and continuously developing brothers and sisters but without further ado let me introduce to you our special guest this evening she goes by the name of professor jemima pierre a social cultural anthropologist whose research and teaching interests are located in the overlaps between african studies and african diaspora studies and it engaged three broad areas race racial formation theory and political economy cultural sorry culture and the history of anthropology sorry anthropological theory and transnationalism globalization and diaspora her research and teaching engages with africa and the african diaspora <clears throat> excuse me tenda mwari and uh, her one of her books is the, the predicament of blackness post-colonial ghana and the politics of race and she's currently working on another one we'll get information about that brothers and sisters as we come through but i'm going to bring her through now uh greetings and welcome to professor jemima pierre hello thank you so much for having me Thank you very much for being here, my sister. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you all be under trying circumstances. But I want to send you my appreciation uh, because among the voices that have been ministering to our people and ensuring that we get the correct information, yours has been among the most prominent. And so I'm even more humble because I know at the moment you're in high demand. You are very, very busy um, and, you know, dutifully doing your work. And I know it's a difficult work. But just to give you your flowers now, we appreciate you. I just want to begin by saying that to you. Uh, Thank you sister. so much for having yeah. me. Thank you. Thank uh, you. All right. Um, okay. Now, what I think we're going to do, um, and by the way, I, I am correct in saying it's Je Jemima, yeah? Not, That's correct. <laughs> I, I was worried you were right. going to mispronounce it, but it is Jemima, yes. <laughs> give him facts. Give him facts. All right. I, that's what you call due diligence. Okay. Um, now, as it goes, my sister, I, I think what we're going to do is 
beginning the present um and then give some historical context yeah um and brothers and sisters the, the history of haiti is a very long one and we're not going to go into the all of the history today yes although we could uh but over the course of our many shows there are different aspects of it that we'll go to but with sister jemima i would like to focus on the last 20 years in particular yeah and it's interesting that we can actually focus on the last 20 years uh because literally 20 years ago a very significant event took place in haiti but we'll get there as you know sister we are in the midst um of a, a very significant situation at the moment from your understanding uh what are the events that led up to the resignation um of Oriel Henri and basically the collapse of the Haiti government if you can call it that as it stands um in recent in the recent months right it is very difficult to to talk about Haiti um knowing what's happening right now on the ground and um but also knowing how the western media um has um, presented Haiti and Haitian people, uh, um, not just the past few weeks, but also in history, right, for the past 200 years. So I want to begin by really rebuking all the horrible racist imagery um, that you see or that the discussions around Haiti that you see that you keep see replicated over and over again in the Western media, including, for example, um, I was, was watching Western media the other day where they had pictures from the 2010 earthquake as representative mm. of what's happening now, because people don't care, you know, as long as you show chaos, um, it's easy. So I want to start with that. The, the, the thing is, the what we're seeing right now is the ultimate um, collapse of the Haitian state, um, the government of Haiti, where we have absolutely zero elected officials, and even the so-called prime minister that was forced to resign, and he hasn't officially resigned yet. He just said he would resign after, of course, the U.S., France, and Canada replaced, yeah. you know, put a presidential council in, which is, of course, is crazy, right? Um, but the reason we were, were there is because of something that happened two, uh, 20 years ago, but also that's something that happened in 1990, where we had, after years of a dictatorship, um, mm -hmm. the first democratically elected president of Haiti, where he received 70% of the vote, this is Jean Bertrand Aristide, the, the, the priest, right? And this was mm -hmm. the first large mass movement. And the U.S. deposed them in 1991. The CIA was behind the first coup d'etat nine months into office. And then yes. he was able to come back to Haiti um, with a, a U.S. force, by the way, but that's a whole other conversation. And then in 2004, the U.S. Um, led a, a coup d'etat in, 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 in Haiti. And this happened because this is how it happened. And, and you can find this online where the U.S. deputy uh, ambassador went with U.S. Marines to the president's house, told, them to, told him and his wife to get in a car. And then mm -hmm. they drove them all the way to the airport, put them on an unmarked U.S. plane, and flew them out of the country to the Central country. African Republic. So just mm -hmm. think about that. They took the brother and sent him back to Africa, mm -hmm. right? So we have that. And as that is happening, what you have is the ambassador to the U.S. going to the U.S.'s, um, the, the Supreme Court justice part of, uh, and establishing overnight a brand new government. Now, what people yes. need to know is how this uh, how does this happen? Well, the mm -hmm. year before, um, you know, when Eresi was in power, the U.S. had a major embargo against Haiti. It basically stopped mm -hmm. all um, economic, pre prevent all economic uh, relationship, all aid coming into the country, and created a, a, a terrible situation. And Eresi mm -hmm. demanded that France pay back its reparations to Haiti because France had yes. stolen, you know, at mm -hmm. this point, it's about almost $30 billion worth of money from Haiti. And Haiti had, had to pay it back over a year from 1825 to 1920, 1947. So Mm -hmm. French reacted very strongly. And by 2023, you have a secret meeting, um, which was mm -hmm. released by a, a Canadian journalist called the Ottawa Initiative on Haiti. Because I want people to look these things up. If you look up yep. Ottawa Initiative on Haiti, there's a secret meeting in Canada. The French, US, and Canadian governments get together and decided that they're going to get rid of this president, right? This elected, mm -hmm. democratically elected president. And so then they put in 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 the work, and and at the same time they're arming and training armed military groups, paramilitary groups. They send them to Ecuador to be trained by U.S. special forces, and then this Guy Philippe guy, who was actually part of this, you know, being trained by the U.S., was sent to the Dominican Republic, given arms, um, and a ragtag group of official uh, of, of these paramilitary groups were being trained to basically wreak havoc on the countryside to make it seem like Aristide was not 
you know, popular and was going was going down. And so this is what, yeah. what happened. And what you have then is you have the removal of the U.S. president, I mean, of the Haitian president. And mm -hmm. the two countries, the two permanent members of the U.N. Security Council, the U.S. and France, and this is why I would say the dubious nature of the U.N., because I think it's very important. The U.S. and France, as members of permanent members of the U.N. Security Council, called for a military invasion of Haiti by the United Nations. So a multilateral, multinational mission to basically cover their coup d'etat. And so yes. you have a military occupation, you know, covered by the UN, led by Brazil under Lula. Yes. Lula. Mm. Um, led by Brazil, where you have this military occupation of Haiti that goes from 2004 to 2017. And mm -hmm. that, with the establishment of the 2004 a military occupation, you have the beginning of an occupation of Haiti. Right. And they set up what they call the core group, which is a, an unelected group of foreign officials that basically make decisions. And that includes France, the US, Canada, Germany, yes. as well yes. as Brazil, that to mm -hmm. this day, this group meets separately away from Haitian officials. There are no Haitian people in this group that make the decision. So Haiti has been under occupation um, yes. from a foreigner since 2004. And when mm -hmm. the, uh, after a lot of protests, and I have to say the, mini, uh, the, the military occupation of Haiti through the UN so-called peacekeeping forces was a brutal one. They killed thousands of Eretz supporters, thousands of poor people. They dumped their feces in local waters that led to the cholera ap epidemic. The epidemic, yep. yep. Um, that killed, people say 10,000, more people are saying, you know, it is more like 30,000 people and sickened a million people, right? So mm -hmm. you think about the spectacular violence that's happening right now in Gaza, and you think about how nobody said a word when these thousands and thousands of Haitian people were dying from cholera that was brought by the UN soldiers to Haiti. And to yes, this day, so. have, the UN has never taken response, you know, it took responsibility, but never paid rest. It took six years for them to admit that they did it. And then they've never given reparations for the death of all these thousands of people. The UN mm -hmm. also is responsible for rapes and, and of a bunch of, uh, of women and children, so much mm -hmm. so that two years ago, that Haitian um, uh, 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 legal team actually took the UN soldiers to court for leaving behind thousands and thousands of babies because yeah. they so many people. So, so you have all these fatherless children that have been left behind. So you have that. Mm -hmm. But one of the key events that people don't know about is 2010 after the earthquake in Haiti, where so at this point, Haiti is under occupation. So whatever president that comes in, you know, um, you know, the U.S. is behind these elections. Right. The U.S. controls the Organization of American States. They control all these international institutions. We know this. Right. Yeah. Yep. But in 2010, and, and so what? First of all, with uh, with Aristide in power in 2004, we had 7,000 elected officials throughout the country. Mm -hmm. Now we have zero. So I have to show you how this happened because in 2010, what you right. have is the earthquake in Haiti um, yes. that kills 220,000 people, right? People. Which, is, mm -hmm. which is devastating, which dumps in all these white foreigners, you know, so-called aid aid workers, humanitarian workers, to go. Yeah. Haiti because they raised $13 billion for Haiti. None of it ended up with Haitians, right? So, so, yes. so that part. I always say that humanitar Western humanitarianism is a jobs program for their white youth. Right? Of course. <laughs> they and, of course. They go and save save our people, right? But anyway, yes. what happens at the, towards the, you have cholera. So the cholera comes in the fall of 2010. And so mm -hmm. the U.S. is like the way that they control Haiti. They're like you have to have elections. So this president that they, they didn't like um, mm -hmm. had gotten elected anyway. So they're like you have to have elections. And everyone's saying, well, how could you have elections when you have a million, 1.5 million people that are displaced, no addresses, people living in tents? The U.S. Yes. Has to pay for these elections. So they decide to pay for these elections. They use the Organization of American States that supposedly ran the elections. They refuse to allow the biggest political party to run in these elections. So you have elections that are less than 20% of people participating. So you have that part. But then the mm -hmm. other part is in the first round that goes through, the U.S.'s favorite candidate that they handpick and put in there did not make the first round. Hillary mm. Clinton flies to Haiti and threaten the sitting president and the Haitian Election Council that he threat she threatened the the sitting president that the same thing would happen to 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 him that happened to 
Jean-Bertin Aristide that was flown out, and mm -hmm. the electoral council, if they do not change the election results. So yes. Hillary Clinton forced Haitians, these Haitian groups, to change the election results. And it was so controversial that even the Haitian electoral council refused to sign off on the second round of the elections. So this mm -hmm. is where they brought their puppet, Michel Martelly, their favorite person, into power. AKA, AKA the, Sweet Mickey. Sweet Mickey, who did not mm -hmm. make the first round of the elections, right? So mm -hmm. he calls on us, and this is the creation of this, you know, PHTK party, the bald head party, because he's bald head, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So with Sweet Mickey, then you have the beginning of the end of the Haitian structures, state uh, uh, government structure, because he refused to run elections, and there's so much corruption, stealing of money, yep. there's a protest, refused to run elections. And he did not even give up after his mandate. So it's after protests, he was forced to have elections and he put his his um, protege, Jovenel Moise, who came from out of yeah. nowhere, who was supposed yeah. to basically hold on to the presidency and then turn it back to Sweet Mickey later on, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in the constitution, you can't do back-to-back -back presidencies. You have to step down after five years and, yes. then, and then come back. So Sweet Mickey thought he could do that. And so with Jovenel Moise, then he ran no elections. And the US supported these two because Sweet Mickey, what he was doing is that Haitian was open for business. So they were selling all, you know, trying to sell the lands, give up all the resources, and so on. Yeah. Jovenel Moise, with the, because of an internal fight within the PHDK party, had was killed by, I think it's an internal, you know, I, I you know, anyways, I won't say much about that, but it was an internal fight to the, to the assassination of Jovenel Moise. But Jovenel Moise was forced to change prime ministers before he died. And he had named someone, which was Ariel Henry, which the US love. And, yes. and but before Ariel Henry was uh put into power, um mm -hmm. he uh the uh, he was assassinated. So right. what happens? The core group then decides <laughs> whether it's gonna be the sitting prime minister or this prime minister that was announced but never put in power. So they decided to put Ariel Henry in power. So what we have yeah. in Haiti is a country that is under occupation, that's being run by the same people that cause the problem. And the same people that cause the problem are the ones thinking that they have a solution. And what the U.S. is trying to do right now is send this military force to basically uphold their power. Um, and yeah. then they couldn't get Canada to do it, to, to lead it. They couldn't get Brazil to lead it. So what did they do? They went all the way over to Kenya to Kenya. find stooges, African stooges, to come kill our people. Mm -hmm. my sister you you've like answered like you know one third of my questions already so you know what i'm saying it's very, very very comprehensive but we'll get into um some of the, the the details yeah of of the history the recent history that you've just outlined and there is so much more in what our sister has um just outlined that we could get into brothers and sisters yeah the history of haiti is very very complex yeah now um one of the things that we're hearing about at the moment my sister the, the, the number one headline is gang take over the country Peer, plenty gang all about the place yeah whether it's the city or the rural area them here to full up a gang right about now yeah um could you just contextualize this for us my sister um please let us know um the extent to which the headlines regarding gangs um are, are, are accurate should be believed um or whatever what's what's the situation with the gangs in in haiti at the moment well the first thing i want to say is after i've explained to you how the u.s went in took our president put him on a plane how hillary clinton went in demanded that the election results be changed to yes. me the biggest gangsters in haiti are the ones in suits the biggest gangsters in haiti are the u.s france canada and now brazil playing these roles of, mm -hmm. of you know as so 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 that's the first and if we don't see them as the biggest gangsters as the ones that okay. actually need to be prosecuted and brought to to heal then we don't mm -hmm. understand what's happening in haiti so that's the first the second thing is they've always used the term gangs and bandits and stuff if you go back to western news media from 1800s 1700s you know they're using this kind of language i don't like the language of gangs for a number of reasons and on, on the one hand I think it's a racist term used primarily for black countries, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's just like this upheaval of these people just going around. And, and it's almost as if the Western media presents this as if just out of nowhere, these black people start killing each other, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's just mm -hmm. like they're just mm -hmm. running around out of nowhere. So, so that's the first. The second thing is a lot of these groups are, I call them armed groups because they're paramilitaries. A lot of them are former soldiers, they're former right. a lot of them trained by the US because it's a former, you know, 
you know, the same people that were there in 2004 that were being trained by the U.S. They're the ones with the military equipment. The military equipment comes from the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. Haiti does not manufacture guns. It does not manufacture ammunition. Haiti has five private ports owned by the white and Levantine oligarchy. The guns come through the private ports and then they're distributed. But there's also a history of all these old oligarchies, these old families who used to pay young people back in the days to basically go and like rough up, kidnap their rivals, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this history goes back a long time where they would go, the oligarchy would pay armed groups to, to do this, right? But there's also the other history where whenever Haitians would get up and protest, what would they do? The sitting government, like Ario Henri did it, Michel Martelly, would arm their goons to go and basically shoot into the crowd against legitimate protests. So, for example, yeah. in 2020, 2021, one of the first things Ario, 2021, one of the first things Ario Henri did, which Haitians did not want for a long time, was remove fuel subsidies. IMF had been asked, demanding that Haitian government remove fuel subsidies. And you live in Europe. Um, part of it's like, you know, a lot of... Sorry, 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 my sister, not to interrupt you. Just explain for those who may not be uh, cognizant. What is a fuel subsidy? Right. And so what happens is, so far as saying, farmers in Europe get subsidies, right? Because they can't sell, a lot of times they don't sell a lot of their, their products. So they get government support. The government doesn't charge them. They subsidize the oil that they they subsidize uh, the their, the farming industry. Um, mm -hmm. You know, states get subsidies. Rice farmers in the U.S. get get subsidies because they can't sell anything. And so, in order to keep the business going, they do that. Mm -hmm. In Haiti, mm -hmm. we don't get many subsidies. One of the things with gas prices were a bit lower because the government was absorbing some of the costs oh. in order to help the population. That's the one subsidy Haiti have. Whereas in the Europe mm -hmm. and the West Everybody has a lot of different subsidies, right? Mm -hmm. The IMF has been basically wanting to impoverish the country even more, demanding that Haiti remove the, the fuel subsidies from the people. Mm -hmm. And the people have been protesting against it a long time, but even Jovenel Moïse could not do it because it was so unpopular and the people would be in the streets protesting. But mm -hmm. I only did it and it, inflation went up 40% overnight. Right? Yes. So your bus ride, which might have been 50 cents, was like, you know, a dollar yeah. fifty the next day mm -hmm. and you have to mm -hmm. so this is this is so this is what happens so when people are in the streets in the millions right protesting mm -hmm. this he yeah. sends armed police and armed goons to shoot at people and yeah. then he's like those people protesting to see our gang so they always throw the war games around to legitimate protests and so on so we have to be very careful when we use the term gang we have i use the term um armed military because we use gang you just basically forget the i forget the thing that the U.S. calls the protest gangs in 1915 yes. when the U.S. occupied Haiti. They call them gangs and bandits and people who were protesting. And so it hides the, the complexity of the situation, okay. but it hides the reality that these groups have been basically, there, there weren't that many of them, and they weren't so well armed two years ago before Ali was in power. What's happening right. now is the dumping of military equipment into Haiti. Right, right. What the U.S. did in Honduras if people don't remember, in the 1990s to create chaos. And that's yes. what happened in the last 30 months under Ayo Ali, with the, mm -hmm. with the elite being part of this, dumping arms into the country to create havoc. Okay, beautiful. Um, and so um, some of the headline names that we know of are the G9 family, um, which is um, uh, headed by uh, Jimmy Ch Cherizier, uh, who is also known as Barbecue. Um, there's another um, uh, uh, of the, whoa, the gang, so-called, is referred to as uh, the Five Second Gang, and the leader is known as um, um, Izo. And there's a few other um, so-called gangs, yeah, which we have com correctly referred to um, as militia groups, yeah. Now, the question is, my sister, among many Pan-Africanist circles, the question is the extent to which the, the, the characterization of gangs is um, being used to hide uh a an armed resistance against neocolonialism in the form of these gangs yeah to what extent can we regard um the the militia groups as a resistance to um uh neocolonialism or a capitulation to it or a product of it working in the interest of the neocolonial uh power master so to speak that's a great question. And and the, the honest answer for me is that that remains to be seen because right. I do think they are a product of this neocolonial. Remember, these gangs are funded by the elites and they, you know, right. lately what you've been seeing is all these um, 
videos by these 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 members, these armed groups saying, well, so and so you paid me to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. Calling out the elite. Um, right. so they, and the reason they came together, they're like they call themselves leave them some live together. Mm -hmm. All these various groups, armed groups are saying yes. that we're tired of fighting against each other uh, for on behalf of the elite, on behalf right. of, of, of these armed groups. And so I do think, you know, there might be a, a possibility. I am not one to be like uh, barbecue. You know, Jimmy Charlizier is a revolutionary just yet because I actually think you know, uh, in the local, you know, that a lot of the violence that's happened with these armed groups has been in the poor, poor, popular neighborhoods. And so the people right. in the brunt of this are the poor masses. It's right. only yesterday, for example, that they actually attacked the rich areas. And I was like, oh, okay, you're finally attacking the homes of your masters, right? Okay. And so okay. what you can't, I, I do think there's, you know, there, there are two things going on with uh, with, Bar, with with Jimmy Chalizier. People are saying he's a revolutionary. I'm not saying that, but I'm also not going to demonize him, right? Because I right. do think one of the things that people do, they turn him into a monster. Like this guy is like the biggest monster and so on and so forth. Right. And I'm like, you've got Netanyahu killing, genociding Palestinians, but nobody's going around telling, calling him 100, a monster. 100%. Right? You got Joe Biden, nobody's calling him a monster. How many deaths are, you know, how many how many deaths are, is the U.S. responsible for? How many millions of lives? And nobody's calling these white people monsters, right? right. And so I, I do think, you know, so I'm, you know, the the thing is open. The guy, Guy Philippe, who the, the Western media seems to love, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though, you know, he was also part of, he was trained by the U.S. to That's go right. after, um, he was part of the coup d'etat against our elected president. And so for yeah. me, it would take a lot for me to actually forgive that. I actually think he should be tried for treason, right? People don't want right. to hear that. That's the, that's, that's the reality. So 100%. In a, we're in a stage where we don't know, right. you know, who these, who's funding these, these guys and who they're working for because they are funded by outsiders. They, yes. You know, and, and they were, they were being paid um, by the elite and so on and so forth. And until something happens that shifts from what they're doing in terms of like looking out for self, that shift mm -hmm. to some kind of real revolutionary discourse and action, uh, mm -hmm. that remains to be seen. And we have to remember the Haitian Revolution happened like this, right? It, in in the sense that you know, it was like 13 years of yeah. Yeah. In fighting and so on and so forth before there's something that came together. Like even Toussaint Louverture, who I love and my son is named after, but he was mm -hmm. working on behalf of, you know, he, he trusted mm -hmm. the French, which is why yep. they ended up taking him. Mm -hmm. And you know, sending them away. And so we don't know what could emerge out of what's happening right now. But what what I do know is that Haitians are angry and they are right. tired of these white people. They are tired yes. of the so-called international community. And the international community is not really, it's France, US, and Canada. Let's be real. Mm. They have anything to do with these people. They, you know, I mean, the 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 nationalist fervor is stronger than I've ever seen it. And that mm -hmm. to me is more. That's the beauty. That's you know, out of all this ugliness and pain, that's the beauty I see. It's just people are coming together and saying, "No more of these foreigners," yes. you know, um, um, you know, taking charge and 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 and, and ruining our lives. My sister, let me just add uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain to your list of near colonizers. Can't forget, yeah, you know, what I'm saying the big daddy colonizer on deck. Yeah, and, and, I, and they're I, part of the core group. They're part of the core group. That's sure. Exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? So I just have to make sure that we put that in the in in the situation because I I have the the unfortunate uh you know reality of having to live in this godforsaken nation state, which is the the, the queen mother of colonizers. Um, but we just so we just don't want to forget that. Um, at the same time, I did neglect to say to inform brothers and sisters that our, our sister Jemima is also born in Haiti. Yes, yeah? so I, I, I want to make sure that I mention that. Um, yeah, so that I we're still have family from... suffering through. Yeah, I right, I right. I'm, 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 Yes. I'm going to come to exactly that point in a second. Yeah. So I, I want to make sure that I mentioned that, that we're talking to a daughter um, of the soil. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm convinced, you know, sister Jemima, my family um, hail from um, Jamaica and Antigua, but I'm convinced that somewhere in my ancestry, somebody took a trip to Haiti uh, and I got some Haiti. In my, I'm, I'm convinced. I, I can't prove it. You know, but I'm convinced. Of course, you know, one of the leaders of the revolution is Bookman. They say, ah, yeah. Came ah, from all right. All right. 
And okay. that is um, the other point that I, that I neglected to mention at the beginning of the show, that the, the prayer that I was reciting at the beginning of the show was the prayer of Bookman Dotti, which, uh, which was the prayer that he declared at the uh, ceremony in Bwakeman in Haiti during the uh, ritual, the seven-day ritual, which kick-started the Haiti revolution, brothers and sisters. And so uh, I wanted to make that clear as well. Um, and also... Um, to say, if you would like to ask a question to our sister uh, Jemima, please at Got Kush TV. Yeah, I know a lot of conversation takes place in the chat itself, and so I need to be able to differentiate between conversation between brothers and sisters in the chat and comments or questions that that people would like read out. Yeah, and uh, issues that I they would like our sister uh, hopefully to address. Yeah, um, so um, enough respect and dig up and and aibobo to the ancestor. Uh, bookman dotty, you know what I'm saying, and I want to come to the point that you just mentioned just now, sister, that you have family in Haiti because I think that the uh, for for better or for worse, yeah, for the agenda, our own agenda as those who are concerned with the liberation of our people and the near colonial, the, the near colonizer, the Western imperialist, the focus on the militia can be a bit of a distraction, partly because if you've been following. Uh, Haiti over the last five years, you will know that there's been a lot of mass protests, yes, uh, and mass demonstrations taking place. People have been out in the streets, yeah, demonstrating and protesting. And so, I want to take the, the, the gaze away from the militia somewhat, yeah, and discuss the, 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 the masses of the people on the ground and the efforts that are taking place. Away, and, that, and by the way, let me just say this this is not to uh, delegitimize or belittle. The significance of armed resistance all right i'm, I'm not i, I want to make that very very clear okay however there's a lot of things going on yeah and so what can you tell us my sister about the the the, the masses of our people at the moment in the various different areas rural and city uh, and the extent to which the resistance is a people's resistance and what are the kinds of things that are activities that our people are engaged in on the ground that you know of as it stands at the moment yeah, and, and, and this is key, I think, because one of the things that happened with uh, Aya Henri, which has also led to the proliferation of these armed groups, is the stifling of mass resistance by using armed groups against the people. And okay. so before, um, you know, before Aya Henri left, Martel Lee, under Martel Lee and Jovenel Moïse, some of the biggest protests were mm -hmm. um, the Petro Carib protests, you know, where's the Petro Carib money? And let me explain what Petro Carib was. And this is why the US really hated the Pueval, one of the reasons, because he um, he had signed a deal. Venezuela, by the way, has always been a support um, of, of, of Haiti under Hugo Chavez, you know, um, mm -hmm. our, our brother. And in, in, um, in 2007, 2008, Venezuela signed this deal when oil prices were high and with the Haitian government and he said, we will provide you with oil, all the oil, all the you need, um, and you don't have to pay us back mm -hmm. for 25 years at like 0.5% mm -hmm. or 1% interest. I think one of those two, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and use the money that you sell, you know, you make from selling the oil for development projects. So this is a real like, you know, brotherly, sisterly um, thing to do with a, a, a country that has a lot of oil. So, yeah. So this, so this re created billions of dollars of revenue for Haiti, for the Haitian mm -hmm. government, outside mm -hmm. of like, you know, this aid stuff that people always talk about, right? Created mm -hmm. billions. And so under Martel Lee and Jovenel Moise, they stole all of that, right? And these are the people that are put in place by the U.S. government. Uh, Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. loves her Michelle Martel Lee. You can look up online. There are pictures of them, you know, hand in hand, you know, around mm -hmm. each other and, and so on, right? So when mm -hmm. there's a report that comes out that shows that all this money has been stolen, like $2.3 billion were stolen by these people, right? That were put mm -hmm. in place by the US government. There were millions of people in the streets. So 2018, 2019, everyone was in the street. This is the youth protesting against this, but also protest against the fact that US was supporting and putting into place these puppet governments. So protesting mm -hmm. against US imperialism, protesting against um, the sitting puppet governments, this happened nonstop. And, and, and with Alio Henri, it got even worse with the protest because yeah. people were saying, how dare you install this man on us? We don't want this man. And then not only that, he has no power. He has no legitimacy. Why is he signing deals to remove our fuel subsidies? Why is he going around making asking for 
military intervention. So people were protesting. Um, at the same time, you have you have the people on the street protesting, but you also had some certain groups who are trying to work on a transition because they're like, are you only is illegitimate. So after the assassination, what you have is groups are getting, getting getting together for a transition plan. So there are several groups. There's the for, um the former um, Fambi Lavalas, which was the you know the, the used to be the largest party, but you know it's back with broken by US by US Empire from 2004. So it's like a weak version of itself right now. So you yeah. had that and then you know they had their own you know transition plans like okay this is what we're gonna do you know take a few years and then there was a Montana Accord which actually brought together a bunch of different people where mm. You know, where you have people from the the the, the masses, the, the the local community, you know, the the bourgeois intellectual. You know, I used to look down on that accord because I was just like, these are like these bourgeois people coming together, and you know, and adding one or two people from the rural areas, you know, to do what yeah. they do, right? But they had a two year plan where they had like a transitional council, and then they would have, you know, they would like set the stage for actually democratic elections after Moise's death. The mm -hmm. U.S. government bypass all of that and demanded that we none of this mattered because they're going to go do what they want to do. And they told Aya Ali, who was only like mm -hmm. with his own transition council. So he, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, he just said, you know, Aya Ali could not be in power without constant U.S. protection and, yes. and, 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 and USA. And the other thing is the U.S. still has an office in Haiti, even though they're supposed to have left. And so whenever mm -hmm. any discussion around Haiti was going on, like right. today, there's a secret meeting. There's no Haitians representing Haiti. President. It's like the UN, it's our colonial office. Like, it's like we have a colonial overseer. This woman yes. from Ecuador, who's the head of the UN office in Haiti, mind you, remember Ecuador that has real a real gang problem. Remember they took mm. over the mm. entire cities. <laughs> That's a right. Thing. Another so, story, yeah. So you have that. But I also want to say quickly, when they say gangs are all over the country, that's mm -hmm. a lie. Gangs right. are, you know, the, the, the gangs don't number that, you know, the so-called gangs, like these armed groups don't number that many. They're mm -hmm. mostly in the capital city, Port-au-Prince. And the reason mm -hmm. that the rest of the country is affected is because, you know, they're located in places that block access to, you know, to go up, to leave, you know what I'm saying, like block the major roads that will take you north or 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 east and so on and so forth. And so they, they also don't even take up. 80%. If you look at a map of Port-au-Prince, they don't take up 80% of the of, of the countryside. Meanwhile, right. flights, commercial flights have resumed in the northern part of Haiti in Cape Haitian. So, okay. so you know, the, the West is reporting this, but they're flying in and out. Right. right. So right. Haiti has 12 million people. They're only, mm -hmm. you know, there's like, I think one point something million in the capital city. So what's happening to the rest of Haiti? Right. right. You don't get to see any of that because what they yeah. want create this narrative that only you know arm intervention will save haiti it's almost as right. if it's almost as if what's happening you know like this is a civil war in haiti like what's happening in sudan it's not it's not that at all it's a small thing, right. and once they run out of ammunition everything stops so you yes. could have easily stop that by stopping mm. holding the ports getting these elites to stop putting you know shifting arms and so on and so forth in, in, into haiti Yes. Thank you very much, my sister. As as much as possible, we would like to uh, give voice to our people on the ground. And so e every guest um, that I speak to uh, in relation to We Stand With Haiti, I will ask them this question. And don't worry if you are unable to answer it for, for whatever reason. But I don't know to what extent you can give voice to just the ordinary people on the ground. Yeah. And what they are saying um about what what is taking place in haiti conditions you know what's the what you know what what is what are the people on the ground saying are you are the you people able on to the ground are, are, are struggling because what's happened what's happened in the past you know the thing is the people on the ground have been dying and yes, suffering yes. for years right mm -hmm. it's only now it's making the news but you know like two three years ago we were writing our, our organization black alliance for peace against the increased violence in the poor neighborhoods because that's where yeah. they always go that's the but that's also the places where you have the most radicalism we work with a group there's a group called molegaf um mm -hmm. I, I i don't i don't know i don't remember what they stand for it's a french uh, an acronym and then they're yeah. like this really radical group and they're underground they're from the the popular neighborhoods right yeah. and you have mm -hmm. the rural areas tecole vivant some you have these or uh, um, agricultural rural area organizations what people are 
the people on the ground are struggling because they're caught in the crossfire between yes. the you know the the few Haitian police that are funded by the U.S., mm -hmm. but also the elite that have their own armed military guards. And so as right. people are fighting one another, and mind you, the, these um, uh, armed militias, these groups are coming from the very crowded poor neighborhoods. And so people get mm -hmm. crowded crossfire all the time. Right, They're yes, also yes. being killed when these various militias were going into other people's neighborhoods and you know targeting young men and so on and so forth. So, so on the ground, people are struggling and dealing with this, um, with, with the fallout from, right. from what's happening, right? And so we have to be clear mm -hmm. that like, you know, my one of the things that saved even my um a couple of my family members who were who lived in the in the Port-au-Prince area, they basically went back home into the rural area where you know so that's what a lot of people have left um, right city and and basically are, are are living in you know in the rural areas um where they have family and so on and so forth so my you know so they're 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 in the par other parts of the country the northern part of the country they're there those who can leave leave and so that's what it is what it is the the poorest people and that's why i say this yesterday was the first time that these armed groups actually tried to attack <laughs> right the rich folks but remember the rich folks are heavily armed like you know the biggest the biggest billionaire the the one the big the only billionaire in haiti is bijou who's also the is a zionist is the israeli mm -hmm. consulate in haiti yeah he has Mossad armed guards you know it's like he has yeah. like so these rich people have like foreign armed guards guarding wait the sister one second sorry did you say literal Mossad armed guards that's what, people, that's what people say i wouldn't know i know that he all right okay i'm about to say boy that's serious <laughs> he, for, he, those he, he, aware, for those who are not aware sorry sorry sister for those who are not aware Mossad is the israeli cia the israeli central intelligence agency yeah so what our sister saying is that it's rumored that haiti's only billionaire who's a, a zionist israeli has a uh, Mossad armed guards that literal is the rumor. yes that is the rumor. Is so that basically Israeli intelligence is protecting this guy in in Haiti. Sorry, sorry, sister. Just just finish your statement because I. I'm, I'm glad you out. said because yeah. I did not. I didn't want to just throw that out like that. Like it's it, no, it no, is a yeah. rumor, right? And but the thing right. is, he's powerful. But at the same time, you know, this is I'm telling you the hypocrisy of the West because just last year the Canadian government sanctioned five of the elites, the oligarchy, not not black by the way. Haitian oligarchy is not black you know for the yeah. most part right yeah um they're not even the mulatto oligarch you know that used to be the mulatto elite that were mixed race yeah. population from you know the the, the yeah. from the revolutionary times to the present but this is these are like imported um oligarchy mm -hmm. the, the canadian government sanctioned bijou uh, that you know he's the the billionaire sanctioned mm -hmm. the, uh, um sharif i forgot his last name sanctioned mm -hmm. all these people um for uh for their participation in providing arms and support for the armed groups, right? And okay. for drug trafficking and so on and so forth. So the, the, these governments know exactly who's arming these people, where the guns are coming from. And so they sanction them. Of course, the US did not sanction these groups because their mansions are in Florida. These people have their mansions and their houses in, in Florida. The, the Canadian government also sanctioned Michel Martelly, Who's the former president, mm -hmm. as well as his former prime minister, mm -hmm. Lola Lamour, right? So, mm -hmm. so these people know exactly what's going on. They know who's the cause of it. But you would never see that in the news. You'd never see these the names of these oligarchy and the elite um, mm -hmm. show up in the news in terms of fomenting, creating yes. the conditions um, that allow yes. things to be the way they are to today. My sister, I, I was going to come to this question later, but since he brought it up, yeah, I, I was not aware because obviously, when you, if for those who study the history of Haiti, you will know of the phenomena of the so called mulatto elite, yeah, um, and the extent to which that has been a, a, a social factor from enslavement times till now, okay. I was not aware uh, until very recently of the fact that now the elite in Haiti is actually um, decidedly non, -Afri non African, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and um, a foreign import, yeah. So they're not even like you know, um, people that were born in Haiti, you know what I'm saying? Like they are in places like Jamaica or you know, or, or elsewhere in the Caribbean where you've got a native quote unquote elite that was imported um uh, 50 or 100 years ago, right? This is a, a recent importation, yeah. So the question then becomes, how did that how did that happen? How, how did the elite go from being so called mulatto to, to being uh Israeli and Syrian? it's really interesting uh, you know that's something i'd actually have to research as well because it did happen it's not that the mulatto elite is not there they're still there yeah, they're yeah. Still 
you know, they can fly their kids to, you know, the Dominican Republic or to Miami for schools or kids, right. you know. And so they're still there, but there is a huge uh, elite that happened, you know, that came into the country um, in the early 1900s during the occup the U.S. occupation, 1915 to 1934. Okay. You have that, and I have to say, you know, one of the key things that people don't realize, and I have to give credit to, there's one elite family that was actually very supportive of the Haitians, and they supported the Aristide, the Lavalas movement, and they were the Isma Ismeri brothers. They're Palestinians. And there were wealthy Palestinian merchants that had settled in Haiti, and they were there were two brothers that that funded the People's Movement, and they were both assassinated. Right. Um, and so, so the only time the, the you know you have these two elite try to help the locals, they were both assassinated right. and by the paramilitary okay. groups. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. So it is it is fascinating, right? Like people, you know, in the Caribbean, people always talk about the Caribbean, and I'm just like when I go to places like. Jamaica, Antigua, Barbados, like nobody talks about these white folks who run the country, who have all the money, like the elite oh, right. of, you know, and, and it's the same with Haiti. And until we start talking about those groups of people that make money off of our backs, that make, mm -hmm. you know, when the so-called international community comes or when aid comes, that money goes through them because they, yeah. own, they own the industries, you know, with, with neoliberalism, they're, you know, they privatize all these industries. That's why you yeah. have to where people don't even have access to their own beaches because they're all owned by foreigners with the help of these transnational elites. And so this is yes. the problem with the whole Caribbean. And this is the other thing I wanted to say is if we don't stop exceptionalizing Haiti and seeing that our problems are very similar, right? It's a neo-colonial problem. It's mm. a it's a and, and so you know we all need decolonization from the West. We need yes. these Europeans and, and 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 Americans to take their net their foot off our necks. The difference between Haiti and the rest of the Caribbean is like the the rest of the Caribbean. The leaders don't see that the boot is there. We mm -hmm. feel it and we see it. <laughs> they have it. They just don't realize it. <laughs> yes. No, you're right, sister. And the, the, you you you. I don't know. The, 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 I don't know. Like the the, the spirit of Cecile Fatima is with you at the moment because you keep preempting my next question, right? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So in in that sense, now yeah, I was going to come to the question of Caricom. All right. Now last week, yeah, I I, I did announce that we were going to be dealing with Haiti come what may this week. All right. And one of the points that I made uh, in relation to the situation then because it was announced that Jamaica and Barbados and a few other nations were that there was a, there was a meeting taking place in a Jamaica, um, and you know there was going to be some you know meeting to resolve what is happening in, in haiti and i said that the, the caricom has no moral standing as far as this issue is concerned at the moment because caricom and the caribbean in general tends yeah more often than not to have betrayed the people of haiti yes when it comes to um u.s uh, and and western imperialism um in general there's one or two times where you can say all right something different the guan like after the earthquake and everything there in 20 in 2010 there was a lot of um galvanizing internationally really uh, in relation to aid and so on and so forth but i was condemning the 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 um the the caricom initiative one because caricom's relationship with haiti is sketchy say the least and two because they invited and i'm using that term advisedly all right because really truly, they, they never invite they were told to bring on uh france and uh, america and canada i believe that, that those are the major ones that they, that they were told to bring. and brazil, brazil i think and mexico. yeah right right yeah, and mexico yes indeed yeah so i i am condemning caricom As yeah and saying Right, right. So I, I was wanted to get to see what you're saying about the Caricom meeting and what and what what can you tell us about what took place in in this meeting and what they're looking to bring on board. <laughs> I, I I have to to say first of all, Caricom has a very dubious relationship with Haiti, um, mm -hmm. um, because Caricom never wanted Haiti as part of the the Caricom um, Caribbean community. They're 50 years old. Haiti became a member of Caricom um, in 2002. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. and 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 before that, you know, we have to be honest that the stereotypes that the West have created of Haiti travels. Right. Um, they travel all over. And the anti Haitianism that exists in the Caribbean is very much. A, a, a terrible one, right? I mean, I mean, even as the CARICOM people are saying that they're um, they're supporting Haiti, look. The Bahamas are treating Haitian refugees worse than Donald Trump. Like right now, mm -hmm. there are pictures of them. They left them outside in a um, in a uh, with a fence around them in the open air, 
and then yeah. they're and then they're deporting them. Jamaica and Barbados are deporting them. So Caricom Same has a relationship and where you can travel to Caricom countries without visas unless you're Haitian. Right. So yep. so 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 first of all, let's be real about that, right? And so so mm -hmm. part of it is Caricom has, you know, the because Haiti is the first and only, you know, really truly revolutionary um independent country in the region. The mm -hmm. the rest of the region, a lot of them look down on Haiti, down to the okay. whole religion, down to the language, yep. down to the fact that they were too African, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, and so, so, so that's the thing. When when and also because we're so numerous, so Haiti's population makes up fifty percent of of Caricom's population, more than that. So we're yep. once we join Caricom, its top population doubled, right? More than mm -hmm. that, right? So there's mm -hmm. that. So you have that long history of like the Francophone countries that are still colonies of France. You have Jamaica, who says it's independent, but its highest court is still Vichy in London, right? So, so we have that, right? And so, so, so this is the Caricom we're talking about. The one time I gotta say the the only time Caricom helped Haiti was in two thousand and three under P. J. Mm -hmm. Patterson, who was prime minister. Yes. Of of Jamaica, but also the chairman of, of the CARICOM. And he yep. was the one that actually was really trying to help Aristide as the onslaught yep. of the foreign powers were coming in. And, and even yep. after the US removed Aristide from power, um, mm -hmm. Jamaica refused to acknowledge um, this yeah. imposed government that the U.S. put on us refused mm -hmm. to um, to deal with it, and also kept asking the U.N. for an investigation on how it is that U.S. Marines can remove uh, our president. The U.N. kept dismissing him. So P.J. Patterson was also behind Haiti joining Caricom. No one else yes. wanted to join Caricom. So the nerve of these little countries to now say mm -hmm. they're going to help Haiti mm -hmm. is astounding, right? So that's the yes. first, and the Haitians are yes. incensed, right? all of mm -hmm. us are insistent mm -hmm. at that but what makes it worse now if it was on their own the u.s paid for this trip in this meeting to yeah, yeah. fly to jamaica pay yeah. for the hotel and sign yeah. the for these people to sit there and let these white countries that mm -hmm. started the coup d'etat that did all that to dictate to them what they say you know to dictate to them that they're gonna rule you know make mm -hmm. a decision about haiti is outrageous First mm -hmm. of all, Caricom has no political legitimacy to make any decision about um, another sovereign nation. Imagine, okay. like the nerve, right? So that's the first. Second of all, they're being told what to do by the U.S. So they're using, they're being used by the U.S. and they don't even realize it, or they realize it and they're okay with it. No, they realize it. They, they, they must know. Yeah, they, 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 they know. But and Mia yeah. Wong in particular deserves much of exactly. anger because she's using this to 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 secure her seat as the next secretary general of the un that's what she used she's using haiti for right so, mm -hmm, so there's that. Mm -hmm. like, one of the key things about this meeting that happened in 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 on monday last week right mm -hmm. was that the caricom members uh, allowed themselves so they met secretly for three yes. hours without haitians before they no let no I, yeah mm, before they mm. let the haitians in so they're mm -hmm. meeting with the, these white rulers who are telling them what to do mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. they let the Haitians in. And the Haitians that they let in are handpicked by mm -hmm. the U.S. And the Haitians join in through Zoom, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so that's that. But the other thing is, Mia Motley had the nerve to start the meeting speaking in condescension to these Haitians by saying, you cannot be part of the deal if you don't first agree to our terms. And one right. of the terms is that you have to agree to this multinational, um, to, to, to this mercenaries coming as an armed invasion of Haiti. So right. be at the table that they made, mm -hmm. you basically have to agree to a foreign invasion in order for you to even have a say in yeah. the running of the country. And the fact that it's CARICOM that's facilitating this right. is more disgusting than anything. Look, we can deal with white supremacy in these white people. It's the right. black folks that are doing this, working as overseas, right. that becomes the right. biggest problem for us, right? And so that's how I, I feel. And so Haitians see this. They see this. And what, what CARICOM needs to ask, and you know, I and I wrote this article for Starbuck View saying, why is CARICOM betraying Haiti? Why? Mm -hmm. Why are they, why they should ask themselves, why did Canada refuse to lead the mission in Haiti? Because the US yeah. asked Canada the first, Canada said no. Then mm -hmm. the US asked Brazil, Brazil said no. They mm -hmm. asked Mexico, Mexico said no. Well, and yep. so then everybody's saying, no, all these white countries are saying no. And then you, CARICOM, 
you yes. and the Kenyans. Like this yes. to me is the biggest betrayal ever. And if I was President Haiti, the first thing I would do is remove ourselves from CARICOM and never have anything to do with any of these house Negroes. What one hundred percent? I just want to say, um, as as an African whose family hails from the nation, well, one part of my family hails from the nation of Jamaica. It's necessary. First of all, there there are many Jamaicans, my sister, who are going to be very offended by your refer to Jamaica as a, a little island. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I love politics. I the solid thing go. But it's true. You know what I'm saying? Jamaican people. Hi, to bigger than we. I the solid thing go. You know what I'm saying? Um, but also, it's necessary to note that um, that uh, uh, our prime minister, <laughs> quote unquote, is a member of the Privy Council, yeah, which is uh, adjudicates the, the quote unquote highest court, yeah. And many of you are celebrating, uh, you know, the release of Vibes Cartel at the moment. Ask yourself the question, why does it take for Jamaica to go to a British court, yeah, to free, uh, quote unquote, vibes cartel, yeah. What, why, why is that necessary, um, in I, the first place? Yeah, These I want to know why your prime minister, you know, had twelve days of mourning for the biggest gangster, Queen Elizabeth, more oh. than English, more than Britain. They had a longer My, mourning period than Britain for the biggest mm -hmm. gangster of the world, the 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 Queen Elizabeth. My sister, believe you me, Jamaica is not independent. You know, one hundred percent. Believe you me. Believe you me. When when that happened, we was fire burning it just like how you say it a while ago. Yeah, look a stool pigeon them, um, crying crocodile tears for 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 Queen uh, Elizabeth. Okay, um, sorry. now, exactly right. You know what I'm saying. So this is a. We, we, there's so much we can go into on that particular point, and from a Pan African point of view, you know, my sister, it's necessary to note that it would be beautiful. Yeah, it would be beautiful if the Caribbean region had the backbone and the standing the moral standing to come in and assist our brothers and sisters in Haiti and kicking out <laughs> the foreigners so to speak the Bakra um you know with the with the support and in collaboration with our brothers and sisters on the ground in Haiti unfortunately that does that reality does not exist at the minute and I recall very well in fact uh, during um, 2003 when Aristide was in Jamaica because you're, you're right in the sense of the propaganda yes, had affected the ordinary people of Jamaica because there was a big debate even in the dance hall community about the extent to which this man from Haiti should be allowed to stay in the country yes, big big debate go on and half the people them don't know nothing about Haiti apart from what they hear about from US um, and, and, and Hollywood yeah, and so there's a lot that we need to do as 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 a region, uh, in order uh to correct uh, the psychology of our people, especially in relation to Haiti. All of us in the Caribbean owe a debt to Haiti. Yes, because everywhere we stood up and fought, but it was Haiti that won. Yes, and I'm saying that as an African from Jamaica, where we have. Uh, uh, Sam Sharp and Paul Bogle and Taki and an African from the Caribbean where we have class. We all fought, you know, but Haiti won. And when Haiti won, they opened the doors to the whole away. So the, to, to see us now deporting our brothers and sisters from Haiti is a travesty. And we need to know that up front. Sorry to, 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 to monologue for a second there, my sister. I just wanted to make that point. Um, I know your, your time is short, so just let me know when you when when you when you when you gotta go in five, ten minutes and I'll and I'll and I'll yeah, I, I, I have about ten minutes. That's... Okay, cool. All right. I, I, I wanna all right, let's let's deal with one thing then before you have you have to go. Yeah. Um let's deal with Aristide. Just give our brothers and sisters a, a proper understanding. Because we've touched on him today, we've said his name a few times, but let's give our, our, our brothers and sisters, our viewers. Uh, a proper understanding of who um, is Aristide and uh, Famni Lavalas. What is the significance of Aristide and that political party in the recent history of Haiti? Let's go into a little bit more detail for us, please. Yeah, and so, you know, Famni Lavalas is, a, well, you know, the Lavalas political party was the first major broad um, grassroots movement in Haiti that brought together all the poor people. Because before Haitian politics has always been run by some elites um, where they always felt like, even though Haiti had this radical history, right? Well, remember we had a, a, a 36 year, almost 40 year dictatorship um, by Duvalier. But first of all, it's important to know that the US invaded and occupied Haiti from 1915 to 1934, yeah. removed, changed our constitution 
right? Rewrote our constitution. The, the 1805 Revolutionary Constitution of Haiti had a clause in there that said, no white man shall return on this as landowner or, or boss. Mm. The US um, um, changed the constitution during the first occupation, the 19 year occupation. Franklin Delano Roosevelt um, boasted that he himself rewrote it, right? That removed that clause, right? So you have that. And then we were left with, you know, this military that the US actually put together, the gendarmerie, which would mm -hmm. then later on, you know, morph into Duvalier's Tontomacoute, right? So, which was like the, 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 the militias that would terrorize the people during his, um, during his, um, during his reign, reign of terror mm -hmm. that was very much funded and supported by the U.S. And so by the time he's, you know, with, you know, by the 19, late 1980s where people are protesting, he's, you know, the French sent a nice private plane and fly him out to France. And his wife, by the way, is on Twitter. She's still living off the riches in, in, of, of our money in Paris, right? Mm -hmm. So she, she's there. But it's happened to that you have the right. I, I think, I think, sorry, I, I think Kanye West and Daisy have a song about that. But let, let's let's move on. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> right, right. But you know, so so what you have is you have this uh this you know in the upheaval that comes with the removal of this dictator, we we end up having like one military government after another from 1986 to 1990, and then finally you have this groundswell of this movement of mm -hmm. poor people with this uh Aristide who was this young. Um, preacher, Catholic preacher, Catholic priest who was preaching liberation theology, which also, you know, people need to look at WikiLeaks because the Vatican hated Aristide. They didn't say he was a real, they said he was not a real Catholic. In fact, they were part yeah. of the regime change, by the way, in 2004 mm -hmm. against Haiti, the Vatican, right? But, so, so I said, part, part of the reason for that, though, was that he had the audacity to make Vodou an official religion. Vodou uh, in the Haitian yeah. Creole language, yes. Right, right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so yeah, up until Erced, no state leader had actually addressed the people in their language. Most people don't speak language. French in Haiti. Most people speak, speak Creole. That's our language, right? Mm -hmm. And and so, so this was a groundswell movement, and they voted him in. And after the you know, 1991, the U.S. backs uh, coup d'état. There's a decimation of Erced supporters. They, you know, they, so the whole, this is the beginning of, of like destroying this, this political party and Lava La stands for avalanche, right? Think, mm -hmm. think about like, you know, the flood, right? The flood mm -hmm. coming down. That's what Lava La stands for. The flood. And fam family is family. Fa well, family yeah. Right. Flood of the people. Mm -hmm. Right. Family Lava Las becomes a, a party later, but the movement itself was the flood, right? The, the, right. The, and this is the first time you, the local people sorry sister, i don't want to interrupt you again i don't want to interrupt you again but just just to, just to emphasize the point that lava Las was a movement among the people before yes. it was a political party right was it was a movement, it was, exactly mm -hmm. it's a movement of like the poor dark you know mm -hmm. <laughs> folks in haiti mm -hmm. let's be real about that right mm -hmm. and so that the majority of them look like me right and so mm -hmm. this is this is what we what we have this movement of these poor people they love this man right and and so yeah. you know the coup d'etat the thing was the you know and he was also a populist right so he wanted to move away from the neo you know he did not want to Im Im and um, impose neoliberal policies that the u.s wanted they wanted cheap labor because yeah. that's what people always say well why haiti i'm like they want cheap labor they want our resources they want our yeah. land Right. The mm -hmm. fact that most Haitians still own their land, unlike, you know, Jamaica. Right. Like things like that. And terms like you own your land and we work our land. They well, we still have crown land. We still have crown land in Jamaica, by the way. I just want to point right. out. But yeah, go and ahead. So, so 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 the people saw that in which is why they had the coup d'etat behind them. And so the demonization of Aristide begins after that coup d'etat. So if you read the press from like 1991 to 1994, it's just nonstop. In fact, there's an article called How to Turn a Priest into a Cannibal that goes over just how terrible the mm. media has been in terms of, you know, they, I remember this, I was a child, but so I, I still remember like, oh man, does he have, you know, the mainstream is like, oh, he's got mental illness. What's wrong with him? This man is crazy. Yeah. So that's how they present RC. So by the time he comes back and he had to come back because, and this is where you start having the breakup of the party because he had to come back because they were killing so many Aristide supporters between 1991 and 1994. Right. And then you had right. a flood of migrants leaving and heading to Florida, of course. And right. so Bill Clinton is like, well, we got to stem this, these immigrants and so on and so forth. But right. they gave also, immigrants start protesting. There's mass protests taking place, uh, pro-Aristide protests in America and also yes. in Haiti during this yes. period as well. Go, go ahead, go ahead. 
And so one of the things that happened is that, you know, the U.S. is like, okay, well, we're going to have to bring Eris back. And Eris is like, well, I don't want my, um, I don't, the, the, the killings are, 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 are too much. And so, and, and so this is where he was forced to make these compromises that would actually impact everybody. And that actually turned a lot right. of the, the true leftists against him because yes, he yeah. uh, took the terms that Clinton gave him. And so he thought he could actually stab off the slowdown of privatization of our mm -hmm. resources and so on and so forth. So they brought him back and he agreed to take on some of these reforms right yeah and, yes. and 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 so the left the extreme you know the the the, the far left who so were very much part of the marxist left and so on so they were just like how dare you how could you and then it also mm. the other thing is clinton sent him back because haiti was under military um under uh, uh what do you call that um there was military soldier had taken over coup d'etat after coup d'etat after um so, uh after the end of the dictatorship. military junta, they call it. Right, military hunters, right? So mm -hmm. the, Clinton brought back, came back with 20,000 Americans. And I remember yeah. this because I was young. I went to visit when RC first came back. And I had I went to a meeting with, um, you know, a, a group of people into Haiti's, like, National Palace. I'm walking into National Palace. Air had just been, um, and then to right to the right, it said, U.S. officials only right inside yeah, the national palace in 1994 right so that tells wow. you and not only that because ersi was so afraid of the haitian military he disbanded the haitian yes. military disbanded the police because mm -hmm. they had been behind him so he had yes. his 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 um his his uh his security security mm -hmm. security was from the u.s a bunch of these yes, tough yes. former marines from washington yeah. state right they were the ones yeah. This is security with these foreigners, which actually end up being his demise later on. Demise, so, yeah. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so what you have is, by the time Aristide is taken out again in 2004, mm -hmm. 2004 is really when you have the decimation of the Aristide, of the Lavalas party. Because we had a, right. you know, the U.S. imposed a whole new government, removed everyone who was a Lavalas supporter, Lavalas party member, put a lot of them in prison, killed mm. a lot of the, the regular people and really uh, dismantle that party. So whatever is left now is not the same Lavalas that you had in 1990 or in 2000. Sister, um, just on that last point that you just mentioned, yeah, now some of the propaganda that is used, and maybe there's some truth to it, right? Let's let's clarify this now, uh, about um, uh, Aristide in this particular period, yeah, 2001 to 2004, is that he was basically leading um, and egging on quote unquote gangs, yeah. So he was a right. uh, you know involved in the gangsterism. To what extent is 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 that true? Right. Well, the thing is, part of it is Aristide had very strong supporters, and I, I I wouldn't be surprised is a lot if a lot of them, you know, uh, went out and 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 you know went against some because there was a lot of you know um, protesting you know uh, uh, funded by the the NGOs, the National Endowment for Democracy. Yes which funds, you know, color revolutions, right? Yes. But Aristide was not, you know, that was one of the, the key things that she mirrors. There's also an article that's, you know, they call it the she mirrors that Aristide supported gangs. And I, yeah. I completely go against that because I do right. think there's a way that people try to link Aristide to Duvalierism or to what happened mm -hmm. under Michel Martelly. And I completely mm -hmm. disavow that because I think mm -hmm. that's, that's also part of the propaganda. If you guys, if you all if you all say the mainstream media is terrible, how are you going to believe what they're saying about this man that they hated so much? So much mm. so that I, I want people to, there's a video of on, in Democracy Now, on Democracy Now, that show, right? Where mm -hmm. Eric gets back to Haiti in 2011 mm -hmm. and go see how the people um, receive him. Thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands of people from the airport running alongside the car all the way yeah. to his house, right? Yes. And so part of that is we have to be very careful because I do think the part of the demonization of Aristide, and look, look, I don't think Aristide was perfect. And I want to say this, right? Because mm -hmm. one of the things that you could be critical of a person, you could be critical of their policies. But the 100. key thing for me is the fact that you can remove somebody from power. Yes, yes. And democratically, like the president, he won yes. the majority. You, yes. you, you remove him from power before he's finishing his term. It's a term yeah. Whoever supported that deserves, you mm. know, my contempt. Mm. Because mm. the fact that you would support a regime mm. change of a democratically elected president, that is mm -hmm. to me outrageous. So he could have been bad, right? Mm. But nobody's mm -hmm. nobody was, you know, you did not have a military force go and remove Trump from yeah. the 
remove them from presidencies. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. Money, you have an unelected prime minister. And, you know, yeah. like, you know, it's just like, you know, look at that. That's Sunak guy. Yeah. How many of you have voted for him? Right? Yeah, you know, yeah, so, yeah. So, so for, for me, anyone who's push, who pushed for the regime change of the first democratically and only democratically elected president of, 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 of Haiti really deserves come to because that's out, out absolutely outrageous because it is pushing for that regime change of this democratically elected official, which led yeah. us to where we are today. And this is the result result of a state that has no elected officials that is being run by a cabal of of western you know white you know white collar um suit wearing gangs yes my sister um i i, I don't want to uh, take advantage of your time yeah i know you have to go i just, just want to say one more thing on that because we have to highlight now the fact that when they because you, you, you've mentioned already that he had to agree to certain terms, that he wasn't actually allowed to run for a while. He gets back into the presidency and then he decides to push for, for reparations. And that is the catalyst for them trying to remove him again. So even though, um, you know, he was critiqued and so on and so forth, and we were all critiquing about for some of, for some of the things that he agreed to, the move then was to, to, to go on the world stage and demand reparations from France and put Western imperialism basically on the world stage from a, a sitting president. That facilitates That's his, his exactly. Other but the other part is, and even though he did those things, he also fought to raise the minimum wage of Haiti. And he used to say, "We know to go from poverty to to dignity." Right? He said, "What what, what is the minimum wage in, in Haiti, sister? What is the minimum wage?" I think it's slightly under five dollars a day. You know, and but right. the thing is. If you look at, um, there's a whole series called WikiLeaks in Haiti. The WikiLeaks papers reveal that every single U.S. administration, including the Obama administration, pushed yeah. to stop the government from raising Haitian minimum wage. One of the key yeah. things they hated, Aristide, was he was just pushing for, he's like, look, I just want to go from like absolute objection to poverty. We don't even yeah. need to be rich. We don't need to be middle class. I just want the people to get paid. Right. Mm. So they need, you know, baseballs are being made in Haiti. You know, Canada's making all kinds of money in Haiti. They need the minimum wage to stay low. And in the WikiLeaks papers, you see the U.S. government saying, no, you cannot raise the minimum wage. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. And so yeah. we also need to know that the point was to actually, even though he did these, um, he did mm. these compromises, mm -hmm. not all of it was. And mm. when, because if he was really fully compromised, they would have mm. left him in office. Right. 100% my sister right I, I, I'm, I'm assuming you have to go now there are a few questions I have, in the, I have in the, to go teach I'm right. sorry no no I, I understand my sister we again we appreciate your time yeah um, we're going to continue this conversation and ho hopefully uh, at some point in the not too distant future we'll have the opportunity to interact with you again but for now I'm sure that our audience has been enlightened give us some black power fists brothers and sisters in the chat if our sister Jemima Pierre has enlightened you and informed you um, this afternoon this evening uh, and show her your love and my sister please do enjoy the rest of your day your students are blessed to have you and we are as a global african community thank you very very much for joining thanks us. so much thanks so much everyone and thanks so much akara for having me I, I really Give you that. take care take care Aye, bo, bo. all right okay family that was sister uh jemi Pierre. i was going to come to your questions uh but i do um i did have to check because i know the sister has to teach yeah um and so um we will i'm going to read your questions out now normally i would open the panel what i'm going to do yeah um if i get if i get wait hold on i, I just asked a black power face in the chat all right all on there all on there. Let, me, let me let me let me find something else all right i need some red black green in the chat yeah all together. I need 10 people to give me red, black, green in the chat. And if you give me the red, black, green in the chat, I'm going to share the link. Yes. Um, and open up um, another show for us to have conversation. The reason being is that I think our sister has broken down the information beautifully and wonderfully. And I don't want to confuse yeah, the, the two different things because anything can go on when we open up the, the, the lines. Yeah. And if it's open house, brothers and sisters can ask any kind of questions, okay, and bring up any kind of topic. So, if there's enough red, black, green in the chat, I'm gonna ask for ten people, ten different smuddy now, ten different smuddy to give me red, black, green in the chat. I will share a link and open up the lines. In between, in the meantime, between time, let me um answer 
uh, your questions and continue to give me the black power fist just to show love for sister Jemima Pierre. Okay. Um, so once again, apologies for not being able to get to your questions. Our sister spent just about an hour with us. Um, and so as you can appreciate, there was a lot of questions to get through and there's more to get through. This is the first in our, we stand with Haiti series. Yeah. We stand with Haiti series. Um, and so we're going to have other guests. They've already been reached out to a couple of them have agreed. Um, and so we're going to be um, dealing with this subject ongoing in the next few months because we know also the situation in Haiti it now done for now. All right. Um, Spala Set says, Got Kush TV Brazil um, as a negative actor in this scenario is not something I expected. Yeah, I'm not surprised if you understand, uh, the, you know, the, the, the racial politics of Brazil and 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 the, and the neo-colonial politics of Brazil. It's not it's not surprising. What may be surprising is because um, the current um, leader you know um it lula is said to be left-leaning and i'm a Gaviat, so we don't really get um you know taken in by the the, the title of left-leaning um particularly when that left-leaning comes in white face yeah um you know what i'm saying the bakra is the bakra so <laughs> we just have to understand that all right um but yeah um it's, it's it but again this is a it's a longer history so brazil has been in, involved in 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 haiti from from a longer time um got kush tv haiti history more complex and complicated than israel far more far more um anthony uh, greetings to Grenada says I follow sister Jemima Pierre for a couple of years. There's another Haiti sister um, named Mam Mamaira Prosper. Mm -hmm. I believe have I met sister Mamaira? I may well have you know some like, like 20 years ago. Um, who does a lot of activism for Haiti? I was wondering if sister Jemima uh, knows her. Um, well, we could check that out and um, I will see, I will look into getting uh, Sister Mamaira on also. I do believe, you know, if I'm not mistaken, Sister Mamaira did come, come, um, come, come Africa Liberation Day in a 2004. But I could be mistaken, brothers and sisters, yeah? Um, I'm going to check that out and verify that and come back to Uno. Brother Set says, white and levantine oligarchy sounds like trinidad <laughs> trinbago <laughs> yeah true 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 with our syrian lebanese population and expert americans them all over the caribbean you know and one day we'll go into this um a in a little bit more detail in terms of not the the imported now but the the the, the native yeah the people that that's been there for a hundred years all right and before independence and the people them the families that became the oligarchies within our various different islands upon uh, independence. You know what I mean? So it's a very interesting history. And then, then I try, you know, uh, cr create uh, a quote unquote Caribbean identity that is defined by the presence of that oligarchy uh, as well. Yeah. And uh, towards their privilege to sustain their material privilege in the nation because they're agents of Western imperialism uh, for the most part. Um, the comment reads oh this is a, on behalf of bonchi Anyete, um who says i'm based in ghana um in what ways can you recommend our two countries collaborate and learn ab um, about and from each other so i will i will hold over that question for future guests um and maybe what i'll do is i'll, I'll send a uh, sister jemima a, a message as well with some of these questions that she wasn't able to answer and see if she can uh, give us a, a written or a video response for our next show on Haiti and present those to you. So apologies for not being able to get to that question, Brother Bunchy. For those who are not aware, Brother Bunchy is our co-host for our new show, which is the, the second episode of which is dropping next week, brothers and sisters. And that is uh, the one and only show. Ghana, democracy under fire. Delving deep into the political theater of Ghana in the lead up to the general election in December 2024. We welcome activist, organizer and writer Bonchi Anyete as our regular co-host and analyst, breaking down the dynamics in his unique and entertaining way. Tune in to our very first show, Decoding Ghana's Political Theater, Tuesday, the 27th of February, 2024, from 8 p.m. GMT, live on Got Kush TV. And we look forward to you joining us every fourth Tuesday of the month throughout 2024. Ghana, democracy under fire. This is a show not 
to be missed. Yes, indeed, family. Ghana, democracy under fire. Second episode dropping next week. Ujima Day, Tuesday, the 26th of March. Do stay tuned in for that one as we delve into the political uh, realities and histories of Ghana, the great nation of Ghana over there in West Africa. Um, and another question from Bonchi by way of uh, Set Imhotep. What do you know about the truth of this iridium resource I've been hearing about in Haiti and South Africa? So stay tuned, yeah? We are in the process of sealing up a guest that, I'm, that I know can speak on that very directly, all right? So do stay tuned. We'll definitely get an answer to that. Big it up, Miss Amelia, for the, for the super chat, chat, chat. And yes, indeed, brothers and sisters, you can also... Um, uh, super chat us if you want to get your comment read out. Um, I read an article um, like saying that uh, Gilbert uh, Bijou is finding Bath and has businessman's links to the occupier um, the typo there, Pal Palestinian or something like that. So you know if there's any truth to this. Okay. Um, I think the sister did deal with that to some degree. Yeah. I think that question was kind of answered. Um, Bonchi says, what did help from Venezuela look like? Food packages, NGO support. So she mentioned that they, they basically gave them oil and they, they didn't have to pay for, for another 25 years. Um, um, got Kush TV. Okay. I've, I've seen that already. Um, from Bossman. And thank you very much, Sir Imhotep, for catching these these questions that were not at got at it, that did not at got Kush TV. Um, what role has Wyclef Jean played in this? And the blows and so the last I heard from Wyclef on these issues, yeah, is that Wyclef put out a tweet, right? Calling no, he put out a, a video just before uh uh Henri. Uh, said he will resign, saying that him I forgot. And then afterwards, he put out a tweet calling for Elon Musk and Jay Z to have a conversation. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, brothers and sisters. I opened the show, yeah, um, you know, with a song today, all right. I opened the show with a song, yeah, and I know Wycliffe has politically sketchy, um, you know perspectives yeah but he has made genuinely genuinely he has made some of my favorite music yeah ever in life i was a major fan of the fugees back in the day and he does have some tune all right and so I, there was one tune that he had the lyrics of which are just brilliant and would have been perfect for this show now i, I thought you know let me open the show with that particular tune it's called marasa it's on that and it features uh an artist called daddy who is from a, a group called bookman experience yeah uh from 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 IAT. and that is wackless only album that i know of actually that is um exclusively the practically the whole album is is in is in creole i say in creole um and the, the tune marasa is a, is a brilliant tune and after i read that tweet i said but now open the show with wycliffe dash with that yeah, so um, instead I went for a, a, a group called Bukan Ginen, um, and the name of the song is Edem Shante. Um, and forgive me if my pronunciation is off there. My Aysen Creole is not what it should be, brothers and sisters, all right? But yeah, so Wycliffe is, 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 is um, putting out the begging bowl for Elon Musk at the moment. That's what Wycliffe is, is dealing with, okay? Um... The Syrian Lebanese thing is a phenomena in Chinbago as well. Same time period. Please let's look into it. Yep, serious thing. Miss Amelia says, I read it. Oh. Okay, I think she's clarifying her, her, her comment here. I read an article that said uh, Gilbert um, Bijou is funding barbecue and his business. Okay, his business links with the occupiers of Palestine. Is there any truth? I think we, we got the answer to the, the, the relationship with Palestine. There, there, it is rumored that there is one. Um, the, the, his connection to barbecue um, was not specified by our sister, but his connection to other to the general reality of militia um, was, yeah. So what our sister uh, Jemima said that the, the, the elite has been funding um, the, 
the the militias which are being called gangs but there is a, a move among the gangs uh, or the, there is a semblance so there is some move among at least some of the people them that are being referred to as gangs to basically disavow uh, their allegiances to that to that elite that has armed them okay up until now um so it's a complex situation our sister said that she's not declaring anybody a revolutionary uh until further notice but she's also not condemning uh them yes uh at the same time all right or she's not making any blanket condemnations um caribbean jurisprudence cannot flourish in that content i agree um and uh finally um, it is Trimbago's Fort Shakura. Trimbago refuses to accept that the, the, the CCJ, so it is um, dead in the water. Okay, um, yep. Point taken, my brother. CCJ is headquartered in Port of Spain, by the way. Understood. All right, now, what I'm going to do now is check if I've got my 10 uh, red, black, and green, and I'm going to open up another show um, uh, to, to have some general conversation. So there's one, two, three, four five six seven whoops i lost count now bunchy china ting <laughs> hold on there. let me come again let me come again you can't uh, mr mr red black green from 10 different smuddy yeah, you can't repeat the thing don't try jim screech the thing we do recount her on you you know when we're not when i know, when I know u.s intervention for throwing the vote all right one two Three, four different smuddy, five different smuddy, six different smuddy, eight different, sorry, seven different smuddy, eight different smuddy, the same eight. All right, nine different smuddy and 10 different smuddy. Okay, brothers and sisters. So stay tuned. What I'm going to do right now, yeah, what I'm going to do right now, I've already got, um, uh, I, I anticipated this. So I've already got um, a link established, yeah? So what you're going to have to do right now is just follow me, follow me, follow me to the next show, yeah? That's all you have to do. Follow me to the next show um, and I will share out the linkages. All right, I will share out the linkages for the people them for come through. And the show is entitled Zivanai Extra. Yeah, Zivanai Extra. All right, scheduled uh, for this evening. So I'm going to share that link for you right now. Come over there, sir, and we'll have some further conversation and go ahead and the thing. All right, so no doubt you can come through and ask your questions, make your comments. Um, we're going to have, you know, supporters and brothers and sisters who are, you know, agents of Western imperialism, unpaid. We don't know what happened to them, but that's the, the nature of the thing. Um, and yeah, come true, brothers and sisters. So I'm, I'm sharing that link right now. All right. Yeah, so click that link. Come over to the next show. Come over to the next show. Come over to the next show. Um, and we'll have some further conversation. For now, brothers and sisters, um, I would like to once again thank our sister, Jemima Pierre, um, for coming through. Um, and we appreciate her and all of her work keeping us as an African community uh, informed and once again wish to highlight the fact that we stand with Haiti this is part one and so we will be coming back to we stand with Haiti with different guests over the next few months some of them have agreed already but i thought our sister jemima would be a good one to start with okay because of how she breaks down the current um dynamics and realities and the recent histories i think that that would be that was a the right foundation yes to get off on and then we can go into some other issues current and historical in future shows brothers and sisters and so feel free to migrate over to the next show with that i say tendai mwadi be thankful unto the mother father creative life force of the universe kuzai muzimu mokuru we give praises unto our great ancestors because our great ancestors are worthy to be 
praised. Abibi to me, Abibi for her day, African power and African liberation for all African people. If you are not subscribed to Got Kush TV, subscribe to Got Kush TV and make sure we proliferate this Pan African media energy across the world wide web. I share, I share, I share. Why them shut it, shut it, sa? Why them shut it, shut it, sa? Why them shut it, shut it, sa? Why them Nous c'est tout bon la vie menace vrai Fonne de me chanter chanter ça Mon père oui Au lo 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 mon père oui Fonne de me chanter chanter ça Mon père oui Au lo 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 mon père oui Mon chou lo Fais-moi, 